This is the application that we will be creating in parts 1 and 2 of this video series. We will list all the Pokemon using an API, generate the background color for each Pokemon based on its image and have infinite pagination so we can keep loading more Pokemon. On parts 3 and 4 we will add a search box and a detailed page for each Pokemon containing information about its stats and abilities. We will start by creating a new React project and opening it on Visual Studio Code. Let's run it to check if it's working. Let's delete everything from the app component. We will add some structure to our project by creating a pages folder that will hold the different sections of our application. Let's create the home component that will serve as the main page of our application. Now we need to install React Router so we can start adding routing to our application. Let's start React again. Let's go back to the app component and create the router. The router needs an array of objects that represent the different routes with a path and a component. We will start by adding the main route which will hold the home component. Now we need to add the router provider and pass our router as a prop. As you can see in the browser, the base route is showing the home component. Now let's create a components folder that will hold the different components of our application. We will start with the Pokemon list component. We are going to use the Pokemon API to get all the data for this project. As you can see, the base Pokemon URL returns an object with the count of the Pokemon, the URL for the next batch of Pokemon, the URL for the previous batch of Pokemon, and an array of Pokemon, which by default is 20. We can see that each Pokemon in the list is an object with a name and a URL with the Pokemon number at the end. With this information, we can create a TypeScript interface to represent the response from the Pokemon API. Let's create an interface folder and create a Pokemon.interface.ts file. Here we will create a new indexed Pokemon interface. This interface will represent each Pokemon on the results array attribute of the Pokemon API response. Then we will create a Pokemon list response interface. Here we will define each attribute of the API response.
as you can see, the results attribute will be an array of indexed Pokemon. We will also have the next URL, the previous URL, and the count. Now let's start using the Pokemon API to retrieve our list of Pokemon. Let's create a hooks folder and I use Pokemon's hook. We will contain this logic inside a custom hook. We will keep track of the Pokemon with an array. This will be an array of indexed Pokemon and we will initialize it as an empty array. This custom hook will return an object with the Pokemon's array. Now we need to install Axios to make HTTP calls to the Pokemon API and get our list of Pokemon. Let's create an API folder and a HTTP client.ts file. We will create an Axios instance inside this file so we can reuse it across our application instead of importing Axios each time. Now let's create a function to call the Pokemon endpoint of the Pokemon API. We will also create a constants.ts file where we'll store different values. For now, let's add the base URL and the Pokemon URL of the Pokemon API. The Pokemon URL is simply the base URL slash Pokemon. Now let's create a next URL state on our custom hook. and initialize it to our Pokemon URL constant. Inside the fetch Pokemon function, we will validate that next URL has a value. And if it does, we will call that URL using our Axios instance. And save the data as a Pokemon list response. and log it to the console. Let's add a use effect hook to call this function at the start of the custom hook. Let's go back to the home component and import our use Pokemon's hook so we can start using it. As you can see, the use Pokemon's hook is working and retrieving our list of Pokemon along with the count, the next URL, and the previous URL. Now, instead of simply logging the data, we will save the results array in our Pokemon state array. Let's go back to the Pokemon list component and create a Pokemon list prop interface.
this component will now receive an array of index Pokemon as a prop. If this array has elements, we will iterate over it and return a div element with the name of the Pokemon. Now, let's import the Pokemon list component inside our home component and pass the list of Pokemon from our use Pokemon's hook as a prop to our Pokemon's list component. Looks like we have an error in the Pokemon list component. We need to grab our list of div elements. That is because a React component can only return a single element. And now we have our list of Pokemon working. Let's now make a Pokemon card component so we can separate each element of the list in its own component instead of it being simply a div element with the Pokemon name. Let's create a Pokemon card props interface so we can make this component receive a single indexed Pokemon object as a prop. For now, let's simply show the name of the Pokemon. Let's go back to the Pokemon list component and replace our div element with our new Pokemon card component. And pass a Pokemon as a prop. It will look exactly the same as before but now we can work on our Pokemon card component to make it look better. We will install Material UI to make our Pokedex look better. After installing it, let's go to index.html and import the fonts. I will include the code on the description, and this step is completely optional. So now, we need to make a theme for Material UI. We will simply create it with the defaults. Let's go back to app.js and grab our application with the Material UI's team provider and pass it the team we created previously as a prop. Let's also add the CSS baseline. This line normalizes the HTML elements so Material UI works correctly. Our application is already looking different. We can now use Material UI. Let's start by grabbing our Pokemon list in a container. This will add a nice margin around our component. We will grab the whole list of Pokemon cards in a grid. This way we can easily arrange them. Now, let's grab the individual Pokemon cards in a grid item, and we will give it a size of 4. Material UI uses a 12-point system, so by giving each card a width of 4, we can have 3 cards per row. Let's open the Pokemon card component and replace the div element with the card component. Inside it, let's add a card content component and a box component so we can arrange the text better.
we will add the Pokemon name inside a typography component. Now, let's add Flex and Justify Content Center so we can center the text. This was part 1 of the React Pokedex series. On part 2, we will add images and calculated background color. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video and don't forget to share and subscribe, it means a lot. Feel free to ask for tutorial suggestions on the comment section. Until next time!